Okay guys, well here I have a trusty water bottle. You can just use, you know, this is an old multi-purpose bottle for uh, cleaning, but what I'm going to do is I'm just going to initially wet the surface of the canvas all the way through, uh, and then, as I said, just slowly pour a lot of this colour on there, and you don't, you don't want it too wet. If it's too wet, it's just going to slide into everything, and you won't get the separation of colours. The idea is that I want to separate these colours, You'd be really surprised at what the white does as well on top of this. And I might even use some um, turpentine later on. Uh, so, so yeah, some mineral turpentine to actually split some of these colours. You'll notice that when the turpentine goes down, it actually completely reacts with the water in the colours and it just turns into the most amazing thing you've ever seen in your life. So I'm just going to wet it, not, not too much. And you don't want to sort of dilly dab it, dilly, dilly dally, yeah, dilly dally, <laughs> with the whole idea of this either. Uh, but you can just sort of see I'm just doing this. I'll get to the other side. It probably won't. I mean, this this can be an expensive exercise as well if you literally. I wanted to cover this whole canvas and I only really want to do one area and that's where the figure's going to be because I want her multicolored. Those other colours can come up underneath later on. But that gives me a general feel and I know she's going to be placed in this area. I'll have a little bit of control over what goes on. What I do now is I slowly pour By a bit. And as I said, you've got to try and keep them separated as much as you possibly can. Come on over here. This will take a fair amount of time to dry because of the fact that there is. She's in there somewhere. All I'm doing is just creating this background. Remember, I'm not pouring it everywhere, I'm just putting it into certain spots. It should be just a completely multicolored human being by the time I'm finished. I'll take, take some of the yellow, I think. Um, and then I'll pour some of the yellow over as well. that's coming up there very nicely. Yeah, I'm just going to try and put them side by side initially. There's no rhyme or reason to the pattern at all. Um, it's going to do its own thing at some stage anyway. But the effects are quite dynamic. And we don't want I'm going to put some dark colours down the bottom. I don't want too, too many dark colours. Um, where the stockings on the bottom will go, will suit. But just bits and pieces. I'm just sort of filling in the gaps. As I go, and you can actually see this sort of this Mandelbrot effect, which is really quite amazing. I'm starting to form in these patterns here. I'll move the camera in a little closer in a little while so I can have a look at those patterns. And that's really what I'm after is there's too much water that will disappear. So that's looking pretty good. Um, I'll put some of this. And then really start to try and fill those gaps now with these other colours. All the way around. Because there's enough viscosity in this so that it won't dry out too quickly. And then just keeping those colours nice and nice and separate all the way through. 
referring to the to the picture. This will dry fairly flat later on. You can see that coming out. As I said, it's, it is an expensive way to paint, but the effects are pretty, pretty dramatic. And it's sort of like you don't even see, you know, I'm not even thinking there's going to be a drawing going on top of this. I'm just focusing on those colours and what they what they can do for me. Uh, we have purple. It's a lovely colour. Once again looking for those gaps. You can see it looks uh, amazing the differentiation in the colours. I can see that the yellows, for whatever reason, are reacting a lot more than some of the other colours. I don't want to try and cover them up too much. start to see that movement starting to happen and if, I, if I've got too much what I do is I just cover the tops with, um, with uh, glad wrap and that just stops them from drying out and I can use them again at some other stage. So I don't want too much of that dark up there mainly because I know that her face is going to be in there somewhere so I want to try and lighten that up so I'll come down here with the darks, because this is where her legs and stockings and all that sort of stuff goes. that you get and then oops. Yep. now for this next one I'm just going to hold the camera and as you can see you can see the, the patterns going all the way through even up to this you get these Mandelbrot fractals they look pretty amazing you don't know what the paint's going to do, of course. So it has a mind of its own, but you can see the real separation of all of those colours. Um, I, I want to leave some of that white poking through too, but what I'm going to do is I've got some uh, turps here. I'm just going to just drop some of it on there, and you can see see the see the patterns and see the movement of the turps. And basically, it's sort of it's pushing the paint into other areas 
where it wouldn't go. It's sort of dropping to the bottom of the pigment and it pushes. Look at those patterns. It pushes. It's sort of quite extraordinary what it does. What I do is I just put a few drips of that on. It just it's like creating a little universe. It just does its own thing. It's amazing. And I just go along with a couple of drops on the end of a chopstick, funny enough. That's all it is, it's just a chopstick. You don't want to go too mad with this. But as you can see, it starts to create its own own little world. I mean look at this one here. We'll try one just in here. There it goes again. Boom, away it goes. It's amazing, isn't it? So what I'm gonna do is I'll go up the whole picture, just strategically here and there, and just put these little drops in so that it can start to do its own thing and then potentially I'll I'll let that dry it'll take a good 24 hours for this to dry and it'll change as it goes along quite dramatically you know you'll see it you know morph into other things I might pull some of the color out of this area here as well um, I've got some other paint left over so I'm just going to maybe scumble um, various paint into the other side but I'll do that once this is dry and uh, the, and that's going to be the background of, of the picture I'm going to put over the top of it but it's just it's an amazing effect and you've got to remember you've got to keep those colors really really separate to get, get the effect okay well once this is dry we'll come back and we'll have another look at it well okay guys as you can see I've got this picture of this very attractive young woman um, and, and I'm, I'm going to build up a it's really like a a montage, I suppose you could say, of varying layers of colour. Um, this is the, the dried effect at the back, and I've actually put the carbon paper down. And the reason I'm doing it this way is I need to be able to separate the varying colours. I mean, a lot of this stuff here that's on the outside that's not going to be utilised within the legs and the body will simply be painted uh, a lot softer colours, but there'll be uh, a whole array, and I'll probably put a lot of white in those colours that I've actually had there and then repaint that whole surface once I've outlined um, this whole character and then what's going to happen then is once I've painted that there will be other flowers um, you know whether I choose hibiscus or not but there will be floral patterns that will go over and above this here I'll use uh, oils to do this, uh, this these darker colours here and depending on how intense the colour is underneath here Obviously, because I want her to look like she's been patterned with colour. Uh, these lighter areas here, I'll actually use uh, probably some some white as well. So it'll still be sort of fairly. It, it, it'll look just like this, of course, but she'll just be covered in colour, uh, and then the rest of it will basically flow in from there. So all I really start to do from here is take my my pen and simply make my way around the picture and the reason I do it this way uh, particularly with the outline and the paper is that it just gives me so much room to maneuver if I want to make a mark just up here I want to take this away at some stage at least I'll know where those marks are that's where I'm actually going to put it back again so what I'll do is I'll go over this whole thing because uh, you don't need to see me do that and then I'll come back and I'll show you the next step of what we go through. Well, what I've done, as you can see, I've just gone over this with the carbon paper and I'm just going back over these finer details because it's, it's quite hard at the moment to see the image in there. So I'm actually just retracing some of my, uh, my lines so that I can get it as accurate as I possibly can. Have a distorted, distorted woman. Depending on that looks like this um, in the picture. So I'm just highlighting these lines again because around these areas is going to go my oil. You can see I've just mapped out the face a bit more. I'm just putting in the other lines. Uh, just to bring them up so I know where I can bring the rest of my paint to. I still love, I mean a lot of this is going to be washed out. Stuff like this here, and then here, this and here, these Mandelbrot's effects, it's really just sort of quite dynamic. It's amazing how it comes up and 
once I get all of this mapped out fairly lightly on the outside, I'm going to start to pull itself together in the middle. Well, as you can see, what I've done is I've just gone over the whole thing <clears throat> just with that line. You can see those colours look pretty dynamic in there. And then her face is just in there as well. You can barely see it, but um, her eye is just there, another eye there, that's a mouth. And then basically you can see all of these other colours behind. I'm going to highlight certain areas and push other areas back with the black, but as you can see, the, you just see the lines all the way through. And what happens in the rest of the canvas on this side is I'm going to paint up to those edges and then, but this will disappear. I mean, great colours of course, but I didn't know particularly where it was all going to go. And then I'm going to put all of these soft pastels all the way across this, just cross hatched, because there's going to be another pattern go on top of that once again. But you can see, I mean, just beautiful, beautiful colours. I mean, I love letting the paint do what the paint wants to without me getting involved. I mean, you know, things like that there and that in there just look absolutely spectacular. And some of that is still going to be left in as we go over this thing. So, but I'm going to start mixing some paints so that we can start working on all of this canvas. And I've got my lines there all the way down. The lines go all the way down here, all the way down to the shoes. And then the rest of it's going to be blocked in. So come along and have a look at that too, guys. A phase two of this extraordinarily delicate operation. Um, what I'm going to do now is I've, I've actually just got the pots that I originally poured this out with, it's sort of starting to gel up already, but uh, it's still going to do what I need it to do. What I've done is I should be able to put two of the colours on here because it is still fairly liquid, but I've mixed white. So as you can see, it's still fairly runny, but I've mixed the white in there. And I'm going to break this down even further because I want these other colours to be really pastely. Um, because there's going to be so much more that will go on top of them. So I'll mix that around like so, and you can actually see that's come right down from what it was. I really want to lighten those colours up because the pattern that I see in my head uh, is this underlining colour or a number of pastel colours like this that with black outlines and then gold leaf acting as a highlight on the leaves. So that's what goes through my weird brain. Um, but as you can see, that's one there. It's lovely. Always lovely to just maneuver fantastic paints. And there are some great brands out there. Um, okay, so I'll just clean that off there. Now the next one I'm going to do is red. So I'll just place this down here. You see that? Yeah, a little bit. And I'm just going to pour the red into here. Like so. And then obviously once I've mixed the white in with this, it will go a uh, fairly pinkish colour. But we'll gather that before it gets too carried away. The white. As I said, I do tend to use a lot of paint with these particular techniques. Um, but that's the only way that I can actually maintain the dynamic quality. Um, so we mix that across, get the white in there. said in the end result that this, the uh, the girl will literally spring out at you with those colours but these other ones around were just going to be so, so muted. Like so, so I'll leave that one girl up there. Just pull that out of that area there. And I'll place this one right here. Pants. I walk down the street in the town I live in and everybody thinks I'm a vagrant. <laughs> so, well, they did for a while when I first arrived back from America. I was a real estate agent 
and he used to just, because I would go down just like I am now, I, will, I was never worried about clothes, I'm not a GQ kind of guy, um, but I would walk past the real estate agents and I just looked like I'd just gotten out, walked out from underneath the bridge somewhere, and he used to look at me, he used to shake his head, just go, what's happening to the town, and then, um, one day he actually met me at a function, which was quite funny, and uh, I had a suit on and I was with Jo, my girl, who's obviously a very tall, beautiful, attractive woman. And he looked at some of the paintings. I was helping a mate out by hanging some paintings on his new restaurant wall. And he looked at me and he said, so you're Graham Stevenson? And I said, yeah. And he's gone, he said, I thought you were a vagrant. <laughs> so, I thought you lived in the streets. I said, no, I just look like that. Um, but no, <laughs> so, but that's the beauty about my craft and what I do. It's, uh, I don't really care what other people think. I just love creating. And if I happen to walk down the street and I'm covered in plaster or paint or whatever it is, that's, that's the beauty of my life. I mean, I do wear suits when I need to, of course. But um, to pursue your passion and um, make a living out of it, you don't have to be a multi-millionaire and you don't have to have fast cars. It's a problem with the world. We all want too much. Um, you know, what do we really need to make our lives fulfilled without having the Kardashians or you know, whomever on an advertising campaign telling us what we're supposed to be and what we're supposed to have. It comes from the heart. If you can find something that you're passionate about in life and you work yourself, hopefully to death doing it, then you've found the reason you were supposed to be here in the first place. So, alright, I'm going to mix the green one, but I'll switch the camera off for a little while until I've got all this prepared. That was just giving you an idea. And then we will come back and uh, go okay, through. Guys, I'm just getting another angle so that you can Come in and see what's going on. What I've done is I've mixed four of those colours again in these, these uh, sort of a little bit more of a pastel -y approach. What I'm going to do now is just start to put this colour down fairly randomly all over the place. No rhyme, no reason. I might even do a couple of layers of this as I go along. And what I'm going to do is, I can see my lines, and what I want to try and start to do is map the girl's legs out. Like so. And that's one. And then I want it just to be sort of fairly light around there. Another brush. Don't mix them too much. I want these to be fairly separate colours. That one's fairly runny, that yellow. Uh, there you go, I need a little bit more of the, the white in there. see that there, because you can, to map in these guys, just bit by bit, all over the place. Sort of randomly covering up any of these spots, and I'm just leaving holes all over the place. So, here. Are going to change her hair probably into gold leaf, I'd say. Okay, I'll just clean that brush. Seeing it's watercolour, it's not so dramatic to have to get the oils out straight onto the dungarees. And from here, See, they're all, these are going to dry as we go along, but I, 
I'm just wanting that separation all the way through. fingers and my hands are. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to keep along this line here. I just want to try and maintain the integrity of those edges as much as I can. And I'm still be able to distribute the colour evenly as well. Like so. But I think you get the idea anyway, you can actually start to see um, the, uh, the figure starting to come out now. And even this here, you won't, uh, once I paint up over the top of this stuff here, it'll be a completely different feeling as well. But I'm going to continue to do this. Um, all over the whole thing and then I'm going to come back over it again and then redraw a whole bunch of flowers and then put darker areas in. Um, I'll eventually get to the stage where I'll do the girl, her hair potentially will be gold as well and then there'll be other gold bits and then some of these flowers will come over her body as well. So it'll be a pretty pretty dynamic picture but um, I'm going to continue on just mapping the colours out and I'll get back to you. Well as you can see guys I'm making some progress. A lot of this, as I said, are just um, background colours. I've actually turned it upside down if you couldn't work that out. There's nothing wrong with turning the canvas around to get what you want to get. Convenience, bad shoulders, whatever it is. But um, yeah, so I'll just continue to block in these colours. And what I'll do is because I do want her to stand out more. Um, once I finish this whole thing, uh, what I'll do is I'll, I'm going to make up a, a wash, just a really light uh, acrylic wash, and then I'm going to give it a couple of layers, I'm going to push all of this all the way back then, so she'll start to come out and I'll push it back and back and back, and then once I start putting all of the other um, accoutrements, flowers or whatever they are in, and they're going to be a little darker over the top. I still need to make her stand out um, in the whole thing so um, and then make her face stand out a bit more put some shine you know I still want that effect in there but it's you know it can't sort of disappear so um, once I've finished this I'll let it dry and then I'll come back over with this with this white wash so that all of this just gets pushed all the way back uh, and then I can start building on top of that and then I'll start working on the girl and um, getting her done as well, but it's it's progressing, I, I'm happy. Well, as you can see, I have filled in this whole area, very bright. This is a little contrasting, it, it works reasonably well. It is late at night, I must admit, I've been sort of tapping away at this all day. But I'm going to actually proceed, if, I'm, I'm, I want to push it back more because I want the, the character to come out a lot more than it is. This is still wet on this side, but it's dry on this side. So uh, there's been probably six or seven hours ago past since I was actually working on this and I had a I had an amazing thing happen to me today. Uh, for the Australian fans that, that know what this is, uh, they will understand but for the American folks, uh, I got a letter in the mail 
this morning from the Governor General of Australia and he is the Queen's representative in this country for all of the decisions that are made on political aspects. But uh, much to my surprise, uh, I had been nominated a couple of months ago for an award in this country which is called an OAM, which is the Order of the Australian Medal. And I got, a, I got an email, I, mean, I got a letter today from the Governor General of Australia, who is the Queen's representative, telling me that I had actually won the award for um, uh, dedication to the fine arts in this country, uh, which really blew me away. I had no idea or concept that I would ever even win anything like that at all. And uh, yeah, it's been it's been pretty amazing. It's been you know quite a day. I mean, you know, obviously what I do, which I love doing anyway, but but to be recognised because of the efforts that you have made in your particular field as a um, as a man is is, is quite extraordinary. Um, but yeah, it's, it's been amazing. I, you can probably hear the air conditioner going in the back because it is summertime in Australia and it is hot and I'm in a studio that does get quite hot as well. So sorry about the background noise, but I was amazed. I was amazed and, and just thoroughly flattered and honoured that my fellow countrymen and the leaders of my country recognised me for what I was doing. So it's fantastic. Okay, in saying that, there are, there are still things that we have to do in life. And uh, one of those is uh, to explain to you guys what I'm doing with this kitchen now. Now, as you can see, what I've done down in this bottom uh, right-hand corner is I've actually painted over, and I've, and I've got to do this until it sort of really pushes it back, but I've painted over a lot of this colour because it was just too intense. I'm only going to work on this side tonight. This is still wet. So I'll come back to that some other stage, but I wanted to push it back as far as I possibly could, and I'm still just using that white that I initially used in this uh, in the figure itself. But all I'm doing is I'm putting on layers. They're like glazes of, of acrylic. So you can't, you've really got to work them in to get the best result that you want. You cannot just let it sit there. If you do, it'll dry over, and you will not, under any circumstances, get uh, what you need out of it. You're still following closely around the lines that I originally put down and I'm literally going to work on this and I want to I want to push it back and it'll be amazing once I put the other uh, the gold leaf and the other colors on top of this later on because you'll see it you can see it starting to pop now which is but I had to, I had to put all these colors these other colors down if I tried to do this on a muted position, it would have taken me forever. So I put solid colours down in the first place, and then I'm just using this uh, white glaze, this white acrylic glaze. I've got no mediums in it whatsoever, it's just water itself. But I continue to work it into the picture. Around the bottom there, like so. So I'm going to continue to do that uh, all the way over picture but it really I mean the effect is fantastic you can just sort of see it melting into the background and then and then the figure coming to the foreground and once I've completed that whole situation I'll then reassess what I've got to do on top of this and remember this is just a layer underneath it's it's not it's not that important because there's only going to be small sections of this poking poking through once I've actually done the flowers and then combine this whole thing it's all a matter of building the layers of the idea uh, I mean, that's the fascinating part about art. You just don't get a result unless you're doing watercolour. But particularly with acrylics and oils, you have to build the association of the idea. Uh, and, and it takes a while, it does. I mean, this could be, this will be at least three or four or five layers just on the background by the time I'm finished. But when I have finished, this will pop and this will be pushed back and you'll see this character and I, and I think it'll look pretty dynamic. So uh, let me get on with it and I'll get back to you. Okay guys, well as you can see, um, looking at this side of the picture, and I've actually just, just used that white acrylic wash to go over the top. Um, I'm sorry about the air conditioner in the back, but it is very hot in the studio. So, But um, what I'm trying to do is get this real separation, putting all those base colours down, and I'll, and I'll even push that back even further than it is right at the moment. But you can 
can obviously see the differentiation between that side and this side here and what I'm doing and it's still there's still a fantastic effect on that right hand side I mean you know part of good painting is to build the story it's not a matter of just trying to put one color down and and hope, hope that it all works out and what I'm trying to do is put these glazes down uh, over this side and, and they'll be on this side as well but to build the whole thing and then the young woman in the middle will stand out and then I'll start to put all of the other regalia over the top of the picture so it, it, it should turn out quite well I mean I'm, I'm really pleased with what's happening right now I'll get back to you shortly okay guys well as you can see I'm just working my way across the picture uh, it's coming out quite well I mean it's there are layers and layers of, of this white on there but uh, I'm just pushing it in as best I possibly can and I'll continue to to do that right over the whole thing to that edge nice and smooth um, continue it down. You don't want to sort of paint this until it gets too dry because what it can do is it'll start to strip off uh, the actual white itself and it, it'll you can see it just in here to be a bit more careful because uh, it's only a thin layer and once it gets dry if you continue to work over the top like that you'll find that it will uh, strip off uh, the paint underneath so you just have to be careful of that as well and then we continue on the process but uh, and I might put another layer over this one again because uh, it's still sort of fairly dominant uh, coming through on the other side so I'll go over the whole thing and then um, yeah just come back and to next but it's um, I'm enjoying the process of doing this and you know as I've always said the beauty about, about art I mean I know that a lot of people love painting landscapes and animals but you know you let your imagination run sometimes it's pretty incredible what the mind can come up with you if you allow it to explore these different avenues I mean I often I often dream of paintings at night time when I'm asleep and I actually put them together you know, I'll plan out the process while, I'll, while I'm sleeping and then I store them in a file in my head. Um, boy, there's thousands of ideas in there, I must admit. But uh, yeah, and I just sort of access them every so often and go and get them and bring them out again. So, But uh, as you can see, it's really starting to stand out now compared to what it was. And I'll push it back even a little bit further, maybe in the corners, so I can centralise this figure a little bit more. Because she is the uh, she is the uh, the focus, obviously, of the piece. But as I said, once this is pushed back, there'll be gold leaf and other floral aspects that'll come over this whole situation. There'll be really flowing patterns, and uh, it should look um, quite dynamic. But uh, I'll finish this off, and we'll come back again. Okay, guys. Merry Christmas! It's Christmas Day. So <laughs> I'll be going to see my folks later on. Excuse me. Um, but yeah, as you can see, I've uh, dropped this back a lot more to what it was. Obviously, my character is popping out a great deal more now. But what I'm going to do now is I'm actually going to draw a series of shapes and flowers and plants. I want to try and um, uh, to get use the underlining uh, work that's underneath here. And as, I, as you can see, I really wanted to, to push that back as far as I could, which has made, made her pop out straight away. Uh, and then I'm going over with a pen, uh, even using the carbon paper. If you don't actually um, spray the, uh, the 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 carbon underneath, once you've done it, it'll actually fall off. It just sort of disappears. So I've had to go back over a lot of this with a pen, and the pen's a little bit more durable. And then what I do from there is um, just uh, simply spray that on top, just with uh, some fixative wherever I've got it. Uh, well, here it is here. So I just use this 
fixative right there and then spray that and that, that holds it fairly true but I'm going to work over all of this but I'm just going to start a quick demonstration of uh, some of these flowers that I want to do and I'm just going to start sort of fairly large in this corner here you can see that and literally I'm going to just draw a flower like so and I'm going to bring it round I'm going to have another stalk possibly coming up here and another one coming up here and another one coming up here and I'm going to go over the whole picture like this so now from here I'll bring out another petal on this side here and then I'm going to go over the whole picture like that just bringing these characters up and then what I'll do is I'm going to either use gold leaf or a darker paint and go around certain areas. I'm not quite sure yet. I'm going to wait until I actually finish drawing this whole thing all the way over so I've got a much better idea. And then I'll review it and see if I want to use gold leaf or black. I mean, because if I use black, she sort of tends to disappear again. So I might use gold leaf in those other areas and then just, you know, hi highlight the gold leaf, maybe just in these particular guys here. But I'll continue to work on that and then I'll come back and show you uh, what we do after that. Okay guys, well I've drawn a lot of that out, but I just wanted to show you one thing in uh, this corner here. I've actually decided to put the gold leaf in between a lot of the, the flowers and then still have this background and I'm going to highlight on the edges of those with gold and I'm squeeze that out of the bottle. But I just wanted to show you what I'm doing now and I'm using, it's a gold size. Uh, that's the bottle right there, can you see that? Gold size. Um, and I'm actually going to use that. And I'll just put some of it in this little, this little tray here so you can just sort of see that as well. Makes it easier for me to actually get it out. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to paint the gold size into the areas around where I have put the pencil line. Bring it up into there like so. And then put it down to the side here. And then I'm just going to cover all of these inside sections as I go along. Just up into there. And because I'm just sort of using a bit of a ratty brush, it's still got a reasonable end on it, but because this stuff really lugs up the brushes quite quickly um, you know you're better off not using too good a brush just lightly push that into there and then I'll continue doing that all the way around in these blank areas of course um, and it'll take a while it's it's a long process I mean just the background alone on this picture is um, actually quite uh, laborious, but uh, you'll understand uh, the effect at the end of it. It should look pretty, pretty spectacular. And as I said once again, I didn't. I was considering going with uh, a darker colour, but I thought no, because if I go with a darker colour, I'm just going to lose everything that's actually in in here in the picture. So. I'll continue to do that and then I'll uh, come back and I'll show you how to put the gold leaf on once the size is dried. Okay guys, now for this next part, um, I am just going to use the gold leaf that I've got here. And generally it's a good idea if you've got gloves, but I just went and washed my hands just to get the oil off my hands. Uh, but the idea of this now is just to take the gold leaf and just pin it and then use a, it's a fairly soft watercolour brush I've got and I just use it like so and then take another sheet and I'll put that one across here so you can 
same thing again. Just softly tap them into place with, um, with the brush. Obviously, the areas that the the size hasn't been put into is not going to pick anything up. Um, right here, like so. Then what I can do is I'll just show you this. There's another little piece there that I can probably put. I'll just take it from here, just throw it into there, like so. That's one in there. There's some there. Yeah, yeah. Just by the just by the touch, I know that there's another piece just there, and there should be one there. Yes, there is. Like so. And then there's obviously another piece just down here, I would say. Yep. And then I'll take this piece right here and I'll just throw it over here. You still see it's sticky down there, too. So I just maneuvering it and give it a good cover. Along there, okay. And I know that there's probably a little bit more just in here. Uh, let's anyway, what I'll do now is I'll take the brush and I actually use the brush, I actually push the brush in, turn it into like a little bit of a knife. And as you can see, any of the areas that haven't been. Uh, sized by any means, they basically just start to disappear, which is pretty cool. I can take, you can even see that'll just stick, stick into those other areas, even down here. I can just use some of this, throw it in there, it's still sticky there as well. And then just work our way around. So. And as I said, I'm going to cover a lot of this up as well. You can use uh, more of the, the gold sizes, it sort of tends to break away. Uh, there's a spot in there, so. And as you can see, it turns out to be quite, quite an effective. Make sure you've pushed it all in. So then come along and then head on down. I don't know. Oh, that's, of course, that's that. There you go. Okay, guys. Well, in the process of putting this together, um, I ran across a problem. Uh, I didn't realise it at the time, but uh, I'm going to have to try and solve it the best way I can. What's happened, generally when you put down the, um, uh, the gold size itself, it's particularly with acrylics, you can't put down uh, gold leaf on oil paintings. It just simply, it, once the sheet's down, it just sticks to everything. Uh, and it's just, it's almost impossible to control. I mean, you simply can't do it. But what I found in the process of this is that I didn't realise that when I put so much thick acrylic on this, generally the layers of acrylic are quite, uh, are quite flat and they're very, very dry. But because there's so much paint that was here and this is dry, what it's done to me is that when I actually went to put the gold leaf down, I suddenly realised, oh, hang on, now I can, I can get out of this because most of this is quite dark down here all through the shoes and this section here but if I continue to try and go over this whole picture 
and then do this, continue to do this, which because I've got a lot of gold size down here now, you can just feel it by the, the, the stickiness. I will run into major problems with this girl and this figure, which I'm glad I found out really early. So it's about solving problems, and the way I'm going to do this is with this, which is a scalpel, and the masking tape. And I'm going to basically put masking tape around this whole body section all the way at the top and then I'm going to cover it with masking tape. It's the only way that I can seal the whole thing off. I can still get away with this bottom section here. As you can see, I mean, I've actually put this down and, and it's the, the gold is just stuck to the paint. I and mean, it's just like, oh my God, couldn't believe it. And, and this is what happens with art. Sometimes you'll just go, look, I've got a problem. How do I solve it? This is how I'm going to solve it this way here. I'm going to finish that whole thing, put the gold leaf down, seal the girl, razor the lines around here so that she's just basically entombed or this colour's entombed and then from there I will you know, basically put it down. So if you look, I think this is a new one here. Um, I can, and I just, I don't want to press too hard because if I press too hard, guess what? I'm going to go right through the canvas. So I'm going to run this scalpel. All I'm going to do is just break the surface of like so. And that, with any luck, I'll just pick up. Okay. And so let's see what's right off. The canvas is pretty, pretty tough stuff, but you've still got to be reasonably careful. And then as you can see, I can actually start to tear that up on the line, just pull it away, away from the actual picture. Um, make sure I get it right. There you go. And then I can do that, and I'll do that over the whole picture. I'll literally cover the whole thing around and then seal it with large masking tape that I've got. And then we'll come back and then we'll continue the process. So I mean, I'm, I'm glad I found it early and I didn't... And it was just in this one area and funnily enough it was in the darkest area of the picture. But I can, I can solve this but I'm not going to touch any more of the gold leaf. It just stays where it is until I seal that off. So let me get stuck into that and we'll come back. Well guys, uh, this doesn't happen a lot to me after doing this for the last 35 years. But every so often... The materials that you think are going to work with each other don't. And as you can see, I've actually sealed this whole piece off here with masking tape. And the masking tape these days is terrible. It comes from China. It's just rubbish, but it's still sticking down. But I discovered in the process of putting this down that, that the surface that I've got on here already with the layers that I put down is just simply too sticky for the gold leaf. And even when I've tried to cordon these various areas off. You can actually see the stick there that's still there for the for the gold leaf. It's the gold size that's down there and then this one here hasn't got it. But the surface of this is still sticky enough to literally um, take all of the, the gold leaf and just leave the whole lot there. So I've just discovered halfway through the process of doing this that I'm not going to be able to use this gold leaf technique at all. And I'm going to have a lot of trouble just singling out how I'm going to actually make this thing work now that it's scattered across and done what it's done, it really hasn't gone down well at all. And I just, I've never had gold leaf like that happen to me. Um, this is a new gold leaf I've been using, and for this type of stuff, I obviously won't be using it again. But um, I'm going to try and come up with a solution that I can paint over the top of the gold leaf and still have some of the integrity of what I've left behind. Um, I'm not going to, as you can see, that's still really sticky. Uh, because this is so dominant, I've really got to push this back and try and use these subtle colours, but, but still try and make this down here look like it's in play with the rest of it as I go across, because it'll just look completely odd. So I'm going to mix some colours. Um, I'm going to try to try and make it an olive green of some sort, or a dark olive green, so that I can pull these out, but then still utilise the gold so that it's, there's not so much of a contrast. Um, and then see how I go, but uh, leave me with it and then once I've got my head around the whole thing I'll come back and show you where we're going to go from there, but 
it's about solving problems. That's, that's what art is. It's about building those layers of understanding of your materials. <clears throat> and even after all this time, guess what? It didn't do what I thought it was going to do. But I'm going to persist on this one, see how I go. If it doesn't work, there's always a corner in the house somewhere to throw it to. So, But I'll see how I go with it. Okay, guys. Well, um, after a lot of deliberation and thinking about what I should do, I've actually mixed up this it's got gold in it, it's got uh, burnt umber, yellow ochre, and uh, some terra vert of iridium. iridium. Well, I've actually mixed up this mixture, which I thought was sort of close to the gold, but I think I'm going to be able to salvage the picture, uh, which is good, I didn't particularly want to throw it away. But using this, I can actually go over all the gold, and I'm just going to continue to do that. Till I've built it up right over the whole thing. This may even change as it goes across into a lighter yellow as I get across to the other side. But I think with this colour and then just moving around the areas that are still gold, I can still see my pencil lines for the other um, leaves in there, I should be able to salvage this. Uh, and I'll just go back and paint lighter colours into these areas so that you wouldn't know that the gold was there either. But I'm going to continue on with, with this colour here and as I said even with the even with the sticky and I've still got the, the size is under there but the oil paint runs over it quite easily. So and it's a fairly it's got, I put a little bit of linseed oil in with the paint. Well guys as you can see I've actually made a little bit of progress. I've still got to fix this area up here but I've just Cordoned this off in different areas of green. I might put another darker green, I think, on the bottom over there. But all I'm doing at the moment is just going through these particular greens here. I've just sort of broken them down with Naples yellow and white, some linseed oil, and I'm just really going around all of these other parts. So, you know, I'm getting rid of a lot of what was in the background in the first place. That was the idea, just to um, map in that effect. As, I'm, as I said before, I want to go around a lot of this with uh, the squeeze tubes and squeeze what I think, because the uh, complementary of green is uh, red, I might use the various reds I've got to highlight a lot of these edges and areas. I think will have a, quite a good impact. And all I'm doing is actually mapping that in. As you can see, there's still a fair little bit of work to do, and I've still got to cover it up underneath. I'll go back and do the green. It's upside down, of course, at the moment. I'll go back and do the green and then repair these gold areas that just didn't work out. Um, and then um, I'm actually ready to start on the girl then. There's some other things that I'll do on this as I work along, but I'm just going to let the picture talk to me in the end to see what it wants me to do. Uh, it sounds a bit weird, I know, but you know the end result is that that uh, paintings will talk to you. Um, they'll, when you've had enough experience, you'll be able to look at something, even if you put it to a wall for a while, and don't look at it and turn it around. You go, ah, I see the problem. I need to change that. So I'm going to keep working on that, and then uh, we'll come back and look at some more.